In the previous lesson, we learned how to attach a design file as a reference file that contained aerial imagery. We're going to use this aerial imagery as a guide, as well as the circles in the aerial image file, to create the horizontal geometry lines for our alignment. The alignment that we're going to be creating is made up of four tangent lines and three curves. To begin creating the alignment, we're going to first start by creating the tangent lines. We're going to be utilizing the circles in the aerial image file and drawing lines between each one of those. Each circle represents the PI point or the point of intersection along our alignment. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to create horizontal lines, how to manipulate horizontal geometry, and also how to review horizontal geometry properties. To create the horizontal alignment for London Road, we're going to continue working in the geometry design file. And what we're going to do first is we're going to create the first tangent line of the alignment. So I'm going to locate these two circles down here. Use your middle mouse button to zoom into this area. So what we're going to do first is we want to set the feature definition to be used for our geometry as we're placing our elements. To set the feature definition, we're going to go up to the Geometry tab. Under the General Tools, go to Standards and select Feature Definition Toolbar. From here, grab the Feature Definition Toolbar and dock it to the top of the screen. From the drop down list, we're going to select the alignment folder, expand that, and select Geom Baseline, and then set that active by clicking on this icon here. So that's going to set the proper feature definition for any geometry that we're going to create. Whenever you create civil geometry elements, they are considered a feature. And each feature has a feature definition. Feature definition is important because it's used to control the symbology and other properties that are applied to your geometric elements as you place them. It's also used to define what geometric elements actually are. So let's place our first tangent line between these two circles. Now go over to the horizontal panel here, go to the lines category, and select the line between points command. And notice we have a prompt attached to our cursor to enter the start point. And also notice the toolbox here that shows the active feature definition as well as the feature name. So for our start point, we're just going to simply snap to the center point of our first circle down here. I'm going to utilize the snap tools at the bottom of the screen. Select the center snap option. Move your cursor to the circle until you see the snap icon up here. And then you can just simply do a left click, and that will define the start point. Also notice here that you have a line that's being dynamically stretched and moved as you move your cursor. You have some text on there that's giving you some immediate feedback. It's giving you the direction and the distance of the line as, as it's being moved on the screen. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to place the end point of our line. And the endpoint is going to be defined by a specific distance and direction. So in the distance field, just simply key in 546 for the distance. Press enter on your keyboard to lock in the value. Use your left or right arrow key on the keyboard to toggle to the line direction field. And we're going to be using a specific line direction of north, 1 degree, 33 minutes, 0 seconds west. To enter degrees, minutes, and seconds, you can use the colon as a separator, or you can also use the caret, minute, seconds characters on the keyboard as well. So we're going to key in N for north, 0, 1, colon, 33, colon, 0, 0, colon, W for west. Press enter on your keyboard. That's going to lock in that line direction, and then left click to accept, and the line will be placed. Now that our line has been placed, Let's take a look at the properties of this line. If you simply hover your cursor over the line, you'll see it has a name of geom BL. It has a feature definition called geom underbar baseline, and it's being created on a level called geom underbar baseline. If we select the line, you'll see we have the direction text here. This is all known as the text manipulator for distance and direction. You can see here is the length or the distance of our line. 
and simply clicking on either one of those will give you access to make changes to the direction or the length of the line. Furthermore, if you move your cursor to the end point and the beginning point, you'll notice there's some drag handles that will allow you to manipulate the line so you can extend it or trim it, or you can also rotate it as well. So if you select the arrow that points downwards, you can see you can trim and extend the line. If you select the drag handle to the left here, you can see how we can rotate the line. Same thing applies to the endpoint up at the top. Now there's also a circle manipulator. Take the circle, you can also move the line. So there's a lot of flexibility there on how to manipulate the actual geometric elements. Also, selecting the line and hovering your cursor over the beginning point, you'll notice there's another icon that appears. It shows you the snap indicator. It shows you that you created a snap rule or you snapped to the center of that circle using a center point snap. Let's go ahead and review some more properties of the line. Select the line, hover your cursor there for a few moments, and you'll see a context sensitive menu appear. From here, select the properties tool. This will give you immediate feedback and some more information about the line. It's going to give you the feature name, the feature definition, the length, the direction, as well as the coordinates of the start point and the end point. Again, information can be directly edited with inside of this properties toolbox. If you need to make changes, just simply make a change here. Now that we've learned how to place a line, let's continue placing the remaining tangent lines for the alignment. Let's navigate up to the feature definition toggle bar. Select the chain commands tool. Go back to the line between points command. Select it. And then for the start point, we're going to snap to the end point of the previously placed line. So just go and move your cursor to the end point. Let the key point snap grab onto the end point. Left click to accept. And then from here, what we're going to do is to zoom out using the middle mouse button. So zoom out until you can see all the circles. And then move to the next circle. And zoom in until you can see the center. Let the key point snap, snap to the center of the circle, and left click to accept. Continue moving north to the next circle. Zoom in. Let the key point snap, snap to the center of the circle. Left click to accept. And then lastly, move to the last circle. Place your cursor in the middle of the circle. And left click to accept. And then right click to complete. From here, we're going to fit the view so we can see the rest of the geometric elements that we've just created. So that's how you create the tangent sections of the alignment. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to create the curve sections of the alignment. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.